So I'm on my way to which is a furniture maker here in Toronto. They told me that they have a bunch of nice hardwood offcuts that they normally just throw away from making furniture and they'll just give them to me. So I'm super excited. I'm hoping that this is some nice wood that we can use to make something really cool. Hey, good to see you. I really appreciate this, by the way. You film, film, film whatever you okay, want. Okay, cool. Do. So everything's maple. Uh, majority is maple, and we use oak, ash. You'll see there's a, a bunch of them that give you the walnut. So this is where we make all of our friends. You guys seem busy. Yeah, we are. We're very busy. That's very great. Busy. And then I've got put aside. I put aside for you. Oh, fantastic. We got three buckets full. All this, are these three buckets? Yeah. All right. You can take that, you work with it, pull your car around the back. Check out all of this walnut. This is insane. Whew. That is a lot of walnut. So altogether, we got 187 of these walnut offcuts. I'm keeping track of all the time I spent on this project, so at the end, when we sell the piece, we can calculate our hourly rate. So far, it took us one hour to pick up the pieces from the factory, 15 minutes to make the stack. First things first, I wanna trim off these super thin, delicate edges so that each one of these is the same size. Let's do it. One end done on all of them. Now we gotta do the other. Let's do it. All right, one hour later, we got both ends of these pieces trimmed. In the process of doing that, I found 15 pieces that had cracked too far down to use for this project. I set those aside, but that still leaves us with 172 of these pieces, which should be plenty for what I am envisioning. The faces of these are pretty smooth, but some of them have glue squeeze out and some chipped edges. So next up, I want to sand the faces of all of them with 80 grit sandpaper. Let's get to it. I'm an I'm an I'm an it took almost two hours of sanding, but we finally got it done, and these things look so much cleaner. I think that was definitely worth it, but it stays like this that I wish I had a drum sander. All right, so I had an idea and I think this is gonna look so cool. I wanna use these walnut pieces to build up a solid wood base to make a glass topped coffee table. I'm so stoked to see how this looks, so let's get building. So I screw down this flat piece of plywood to use as a fence. And then just to get started, I'm gonna use some super glue and wood glue. But don't worry, we're gonna use some stronger fasteners for the other ones. All right, there's one. I'm not using too much wood glue because I don't want to deal with all the squeeze out. So now I'll take two of these shapes, put them against my fence, and then this one is gonna go right in the middle. And then I want to be really careful to only put glue inside this outline. And again, not too much because I don't want to deal with squeeze out. This on top, line up the edges. Just drive in some brad nails. Beautiful. And there is the start of our pattern. Ooh, that looks awesome. 
It's 33 inches by 33 inches, and I think this is going to make such a cool coffee table. Whew, that was a long day. Let's pack it up. I'll see you tomorrow. While we take a break from the build, I'd like to take a minute to tell you about the sponsor for this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who wants to explore their creativity. From Fusion 360 and 3D printing to illustration, video editing, and more, Skillshare has classes that match your goals and interests. Last week, I was browsing Skillshare and I noticed this class that just jumped out at me. It's called Creative Mindfulness, Easy Exercises to Find Inspiration and Magic Everywhere by Dan Dan Liu. So many of my ideas come from everyday situations, and as much as I try to live in the moment, sometimes I find myself falling into a distracted or cynical mindset. This class seems like a great opportunity to become more consistent at really appreciating what I'm experiencing right now and apply it to my creative work. If you're like me and you find it hard to set aside time for a multi-hour course, you'll appreciate that this class is only 42 minutes long, but it's split into seven days with one exercise per day. So it's a low barrier to entry with built-in consistency, which increases the chance that you'll actually do the course. I really appreciate that Skillshare has a lot of short, value-packed classes like this one that are easy to fit into my busy schedule. Join Skillshare today and take your creativity to the next level. Explore their extensive collection of online classes risk-free by joining with my link. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Now let's get back to the build. So I saved some of the walnut sawdust that I did from all the sanding earlier. And I'm gonna mix that with some wood glue. And I'm gonna use that to fill these exposed nail holes. You already know what time it is. More sanding. I'm I picked up these big beefy casters and I want to use them for this table. They weren't cheap, but I think they look super cool and they're really going to add to the modern industrial look. I could screw these directly to the base, but because this is pretty thin in some areas, I made these spacer blocks out of the scrap walnut. This will also add a bit more height. I'm being really careful to make sure I'm nailing into the thick parts of the base. Nice. Before applying finish, there is one more detail that I want to add. I'm going to be finishing this with Verithane Professional Clear Finish in Satin. There will be a link to this in the description along with everything else I use in this project. Let's get to it. After four coats of finish, this thing is looking awesome. I think we're ready to put on the casters. Ah, oh, I love working with hardwood. Holes drill so cleanly. Everything's just better with hardwood. All right, moment of truth. Oh, this thing is now heavier. All right, now let's go down to the ground. Whew, there it is. Oh, that looks so cool. And now for the finishing touch. Oh, everything about this table is heavy. There we go. Does it fit? Beautiful. This is a half inch piece of tempered glass. I got this custom made for this table and it costs $271. A little on the expensive side, but I think it is so worth it. I mean, look how good this looks. <sighs> okay, so there's something that I haven't told you yet. From the early stages of this project, I thought that I had a buyer lined up. If you watched my pallet desk build video, you might remember Mackenzie who ended up buying that desk and I knew that he needed to furnish his apartment. So I reached out to him and said, hey, I'm building this coffee table. Do you think you might be interested in buying it? And he said that he might, he might be interested in buying it. 
So I progressed through the project. I was pretty confident that he was gonna get it in the end, but through all of our communication, it was always my design and me approaching him. So there always was a chance that it wasn't gonna fit his style. Whereas in the pallet desk build, we collaborated on that design from the very beginning. So there was always a chance that he wasn't gonna want it in the end, and that's what ended up happening. I sent him some finished shots, and it just wasn't his style, which is totally fine. I knew this was a possibility all along, but it kind of stings a little bit, especially since I'm moving in a week, and I really wanna sell this before I go. So we're back to the strategy from the original palette table build. I took some photos, I posted it for sale on Instagram, YouTube community, and on my neighborhood Facebook page, and I'm hoping that I can sell this thing before I go. Guess we gotta just wait and find out. By the way, I priced the table at $1,400, and I will go over why I landed on that price when I do the cost breakdown at the end of this video. Two days later. <sighs> I'm just gonna cut to the chase. People hate the wheels. And you know, I get it. I had this vision in my head and it didn't end up working out in reality. The look just isn't right. There's like a handful of people that do like the wheels, but if we're gonna sell this on spec, I don't think it's gonna happen with these things on there. So let's switch them out. I use a chisel instead. Oh, that's way easier. Oh, I should have done that from the beginning. <laughs> wow, that works so much better than the pry bar. So I picked up these legs and I think they're going to look so much better. Let's put them on. <laughs> Shout out to leg makers that actually send you hardware. There's nothing more frustrating than ordering legs and then them not coming with any hardware. And they send you one extra screw. That is a stand-up move. <clears throat> so it is currently Wednesday. I relisted the table with the new legs on Monday and I'm moving on Friday. And so far, no one has offered to buy the table. I've gotten a lot of compliments. People seem to really like it, but I mean, it's expensive. It's a very unique look. So this might just be one of those things that takes a while to sell. But I really wanted to sell this before leaving Toronto. So if it doesn't sell in the next two days, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So it is currently Wednesday at 8 p.m. and no one has bought the coffee table. So you know what that means. It's mine! <laughs> we officially have a piece of furniture. Yay, celebration kisses! We may not have a bed, but we're gonna have a really nice coffee table. I mean, I'm sorry that nobody bought it, but I'm happy that we get it. Yeah, me too. Abby is too. <laughs> awesome. So what do you think of the coffee table? I love it. I love that you didn't sell it. It looks really good over here. It does. It's so cool. And you know what Diva said too? It's, oh, I can't. Here, hold this. Where it's from. But it's nice to have the version of where it came from is connected to somebody that we love very much. It's a cool connection. It's like the only piece of furniture in our yeah. place that's mind the mess. It works really well in the space. Especially yeah. with all like, the plants on the bay window. Yeah. We, let's just fill this place with plants. I like it. Or at least that bay window. Yeah. I mean, we also, myself, my, we myself, blah, blah, blah. Are you tell? delirious from a day nah. of meeting? You also gave me half a bottle of champagne. So was this project a failure? Well, we have this really cool table now and Eden and I are both really happy with it. But obviously the goal from the beginning was to sell this, which we didn't do. And there's that expression that something is only a failure if you don't learn from it. And I think one of the major lessons here is that if you want to sell something that is unique and expensive, 
you can't be in a rush, which I was. I really wanted to sell this before leaving Toronto. I put this ambiguous time limit on myself that probably wasn't necessary. And I think one of the biggest ironies about this project is that today, after moving, I got a message asking if the table was still available. If I waited longer, I could have reduced the price. I could have tried marketing it in different ways, but I put this ambiguous time limit on myself and you know, it didn't work, but it's fine. Now we have this really cool table and now we gotta fill this space with other furniture. But for now, let's talk price. So material cost. The glass tabletop was $271. The casters were 148, which obviously aren't on here anymore. $5 in mounting hardware and a $20 can of finish. That comes out to $444 for materials. Now, when I made the first listing, I had spent 10 hours and 50 minutes on this project. I estimated it would take about an hour to do delivery, which would be the final step bringing the final time to 11 hours and 50 minutes. An hourly rate of $80 per hour, which I think is fair for this project, brings the total price to $1,400. Now, the new legs were $37, which is less than the casters, but as you saw, it took time to replace the casters with the legs, take photos, make new social media posts. So it kind of all comes out in the wash, and I kept the price at $1,400. Now, I've gotten some comments on previous videos from people who are surprised that I'm charging such a high hourly rate. And I think this comes down to a fundamental misunderstanding between a wage, which you make when you're working for someone else, and an hourly rate, which you charge when you're running your own business. That $80 per hour is not going directly into my pocket. Part of that is covering overhead, things like electricity, rent, the depreciation of my tools. It's like when you go to a mechanic and they charge $100 per hour for their labor. That's not going directly into the mechanic's pocket. A portion of that is being used to cover the overhead of the garage. And I find it really interesting that no one bats an eye when you pay $100 per hour for a mechanic, but for handmade goods, then they have a problem. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I am so excited to make more stuff from this new space. And if you would like to see what I'm up to behind the scenes, consider supporting this channel on Patreon. All of my patrons at every level get exclusive access to the behind the scenes Instagram page. To learn more about that, head on over to patreon.com slash MorleyKurt. And I would like to give a special thank you to my top patron, my mom, Kathy Kurt. Thanks mom, I love you. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.